next one we have Ron Powell from Circle CI, and this is going to be about CI CD benchmarks for high performing teams. Hi, uh, thank you for coming to my talk today. I'll be discussing CI CD benchmarks for high performing teams in 2021. Uh, I hope you're all excited to hear about this presentation. This is really close, this is really exciting content to me. It is a project that is one of my favorite things that I work on at Circle CI. And so I'm going to be pretty pumped about this presentation, and I hope that you are as well. Uh, so a little bit more information about me. Uh, I'm the technical content marketing manager at Circle CI, and so that that involves a large number of things. Um, but one of the things that it does is it gives me an opportunity to uh, work with technical content that usually looks like tutorials at Circle CI, and so uh, I get to to kind of become intimately aware of the way that users uh, uh, utilize our product through a lens that's not often available to most folks at an organization. And so not only am I very much aware of the way that folks use our product, uh, but I also have access to an enormous amount of data about the use of our product. And so I'm here to tell you about the combination of those two things. So just real quickly before we begin, uh, I'll cover a little bit of today's agenda. Uh, really, the first part of this is going to be some setup. Uh, I mentioned just a minute ago that you know I work on a really exciting project at Circle CI. It's about benchmarking uh, data for um, engineering teams, and so we'll get a little bit into what those benchmarks are, what types of things we measure, uh, and then a little bit of the application at Circle CI, uh, the data set that we collect and th through our application, um, and then just 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 wrapping with the the, the real insights. I mean, this is the the part that is uh, uh, the value the value that we get out of this 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 project is really being able to produce these types of insights, and so. Uh, a little bit more about Circle CI. Uh, Circle CI has been around for about 10 years now. We're in a hyper growth phase where uh, we're adding a large number of employees. Our footprint is now expanded uh, uh, for employee-wise um, up to five countries uh, or five continents. Uh, but Circle CI is a, it's a global uh, uh, organization with a global user base. Um, and so be, being that we've been able to solve continuous integration scenarios for uh, about 10 years now, we've been able to collect a large number of really exciting organizations that, you know, build, test and deploy with CircleCI. And so uh, really the, the, the value of this type of experiment is that we get to see the collection of all of the workflows performed by all of the groups in our, uh, you know, uh, that, are, that are using our product to make some comparisons between them. And so where exactly does Circle CI sit in the application development tool uh, uh, pipeline? I mean, that's really what we're talking about here is application development. These are engineering teams that deliver some type of digital product for their organizations, whether that be a product that's served to customers, whether that be a product that's used internally. Uh, regardless of how that end product is used by your, an organization, uh, it needs to be built, tested, and delivered. And that is often the role that Circle CI plays for organizations. And so, uh, what you see here on the left is the the creation or ideation stage of application development. And so, that looks like version control uh, for Circle CI users. The version control looks like GitHub and Bitbucket uh, for the data set that we're looking at today. Uh, it is restricted to only GitHub users uh, or organizations that have their version control system that use GitHub's version control system exclusively. Uh, but that still gives us a very large a uh, number of, of, of folks to consider. Um, and then we have on the right, the logistics stage, the, the, this is like the deployed into production stage. And so uh, Circle CI has the ability to kind of like uh, operate whatever tasks that you would need to do between uh, the ideation creation and the ultimate delivery of your applications to your end users. So because of that, uh, that is the data set that we're going to look at. We're going to look at um, all of the logos that we had on that previous slide, plus all of the rest of the logos that uh, are running workflows on Circle CI and see if we can't make heads or tails of the way that uh, those software teams are performing, maybe even get to the point which we can benchmark, uh, you know, uh, levels where we might be able to set expectations for our own teams. So uh, I'll start just by introducing not my report. My report is the state of software delivery. Uh, and that is, uh, the, it's in its second year. This here pictured as Puppet's report. They have a report that's been around a little bit longer than ours. I think that they, they might be at about 10 years for their state of DevOps report. Uh, 
State of DevOps reports, these reports are, uh, you know, very widely used in the industry. Um, a lot of people look forward to these coming out every year to see how trends are changing, what things are changing on engineering teams, and how people really are being able to define and derive the value that their engineering teams create. Uh, and then once you can define and derive that value that your engineering teams create, then it's all about optimizing and making that as efficiency of a pipeline, as efficient of a pipeline as possible. And so what is the difference between these reports and, and our report? Because we ultimately would want to net new and that's that's actually what we have. And so uh, the real value of the the, the survey that the, or the, the report that Circle CI has is that it is uh, it's significantly larger than all of the other uh, reports. And so how, how is that possible? Uh, well, most of the other reports that are are used to define you know success for engineering teams that are created from survey data. And so that data uh, has the limitation of there's the self-selection from the folks that are excited enough about their DevOps pipelines to want to participate in a DevOps survey, uh, as well as those questions, there's there's often a bias towards, uh, or because you need a concrete answer from your survey question, uh, a lot of them default towards uh, answering questions around the primary service or application at their organization. And so it's not just a self-selecting um, in the folks that are uh, excited and motivated by DevOps, but it's also uh, self-selected in that they are oftentimes only reporting on primary services. And so uh, really the difference between the two is, is, is this, it's the performance derived versus performance described. And that I think is uh, a real big contribution to the reports that already exist. And so uh, and ultimately what we're getting at is this, what are the metrics that are important to measuring DevOps productivity? Uh, you know, we're big surprise, we're not gonna stray too far from what the bigger reports uh, talk about. And I mean bigger just in that they've been out for a little bit longer. Uh, our reports seems to be doing very well, <laughs> but uh, the, 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 the metrics that those, those reports I mean, there's other reports. There's the door report that comes out every year as well. And, they, and, and really, we're talking about these four subjects. And I'll say subjects because there's going to be a slight difference between the way that these things, these types of metrics can be discussed in a survey and then the way that they can be discussed or not discussed, but analyzed on a platform or with a tool. And so uh, things like duration, I mean, most of these things uh, may be a little bit self-explanatory. I'll go through just to make sure that we're covering all of these things clearly, though. Uh, duration is going to be the length of time that it takes to move an increment of work through your application development pipeline, right? So uh, because we are a CI tool, uh, I can, I mean, we're looking, we have, you know, we're looking for uh, changes in your version control system. And so when we see those changes, then we can propagate the build tool test and, and deploy pipelines um, or propagate your work through the build test and deploy pipeline. And we can measure the length of time that it takes to push that increment of work through your pipeline. Uh, the next thing that we have here is mean time to recovery. That mean time to recovery is going to be, uh, you know, with you push an increment of work through your system, uh, do you get, uh, if you get a failed signal or a, a bad signal, if the work that you push through your system was not the work that is desired, uh, how quickly does it take you to get your system back to the stable state that you actually desire? Uh, and so this is something that's also really important to measure. Throughput, we're over here looking at number of times you push an increment of work through your system. This is also something very important to measure. Uh, success rate, the number of times you push increment of work through your system and that increment of work is a successful addition to your code base. Uh, now, all of these things in some way are also discussed in the uh, door report, the puppet report, but they look at uh, things a little bit differently and they can do that because they're asking these developers about things that don't necessarily happen on the platform. For instance, duration often looks like lead time in some of these other uh, reports. And so the difference between that is going to be, you know, lead time might be uh, while I'm ideating and brainstorming with my team outside, I might be doing some uh, scaffolding on scratch paper or, you know, doing some, uh, you know, ad hoc kind of trying to build out uh, a solution, you know, without necessarily committing code to a code base. 
like all of those things could be happening before I get to the point where I update my code base and push an increment through my CI tool. And so I'm missing a lot of visibility into that. But what I can do is I can measure once you get to the point where you push commit through your uh, system, then I can measure how quickly that signal, you get a signal that comes back from that. And so uh, a lot of the differences between the ways that these things are discussed in the surveys and in the way that I'm going to discuss them today just have to do with that little bit that I can only really get visibility into the things that happen on the platform or the tool. And so I'm going to be able to measure and make comparison across uh, all of the organizations in my and, the, and their workflows in my data set uh, from from that vantage point. So let's 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 get started and see what that looks like throughput. Uh, so this is you know how often do you get code that triggers CI? Uh, in large part, you know the, the Circle CI is going to run when we see uh, a push to your Git server, uh, and so that's basically the 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 increment of work signal that we are looking for, and then we start to measure uh, that you know like we we, we measure the 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 number the volume of the of, of those work signals that are coming through uh based based on that and so throughput is going to be an interesting thing especially because we historically know there's companies that get to you know go around touting the number of times that they deploy a day uh this is this is this is all this is the number of times a workflow was run on circle ci and so i say workflow and i don't say deploy because I don't necessarily have uh, visibility into whether a workflow deploys or not. And so I can make the assumption that of the set of workflows that I have, there is a percentage of them or a subset of them that are deploys. And so uh, even with that assumption, what I see when I analyze the data is that uh, you know, even at 50th percentile, uh, I have less than one uh, commit per day. And so uh, that, definitely isn't the same signal that we often get from survey results where developers uh, sometimes can claim that they're you know, deploying their products uh, tens of times or even greater uh, numbers of times per day. And I don't believe that that's incorrect. I believe that there's a large number of people who are pushing that many commits, but is it the vast majority? I mean, the 50th percentile number here says that that's actually not true. Uh, and so the, I mean, this is the, the, the most projects aren't, aren't deploying dozens of times per day, uh, I think is a really easy thing for us to be able to pull and derive from this, this, this information. And I think that that, that, that sets the level, uh, at least in a, in a, in a more into a more reasonable range for us, as we start to understand what benchmarking, uh, against the quote unquote industry. And I'll, I give the quotes just because, uh, you know, not, <clears throat> While we have an enormous number of organizations that are on our platform right now, we certainly uh, don't have, uh, uh, it, it is still just a subset of the application development that's happening on CI tools uh, in, in, the, in the world. And so why is this different from survey data? And again, it's gonna be uh, survey data often is uh, about the primary application or service that you work on. And so there could be primary applications or services that uh, are pushed tens, maybe or, you know tens, maybe even up to a hundred times per day. Uh, that would be a very large number of, of of commits per day to a project. But the it's it, it there's there's an, any number of scenarios in which that could occur. And so the primary application or service uh, probably is something that's getting that. And uh, and our number is as high as it is uh, because. Uh, you know, those types of primary services and application uh, workflows um, are what brings it up to one and that there's the, the non-primary application or services probably are seeing a lot fewer workflows than what one would imagine, or at least what I had. All right, so now we've gotten to duration. And so duration is one of the more important, uh, I, I think it's one of the more important of the four metrics for us to consider because duration covers the amount of time that it takes for a uh, workflow to move through or a, an increment of work to move through our system. Now, the reason that I think that this is one of the most important things I think is also, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to lean back into the reports uh, from the industry, the, from Dora and from Puppet and from other organizations in which they really do a good job of upselling continuous integration. And so I'm, I'm going to take a stance right here and say the continuous integration tools are not just tools where you collect your scripts so that you can run automation. Uh, continuous integration is a philosophy of application development that includes a feedback loop. 
And that feedback loop requires you to get a signal from the work that you push through your application development pipeline and then be able to respond to that signal. And so since response to the signal is, I would argue, the uh, absolute most important metric for us to consider, uh, if that's going to be the absolute most important metric to consider, then getting a signal back that allows us to then respond is going to be the second best. And so that really is where this, this kind of this duration sits with me, at least. And, and, and I'll show you kind of how that 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 shapes up in the data set. So how long does it take to get results? This is the real value of continuous integration and using these types of tools and these platforms for application development. Uh, how quickly can I get a signal back? Hi, we are Ethicode and we organize the DevOps conference. What developers really want is to see their software live. CICD minimizes the time from idea to software delivery. We would love to speak with you to learn how we could help you to remove the pain and uncertainty from your software development lifecycle. You can find us at ethico.com. The links are in the description. And have a great time with the DevOps conference talks. I mean, you can get a signal back incredibly fast. I mean, the 5% of builds filled finished in less than, than 12 seconds. Uh, the scale, I just, you know, to, to, to pump this a little bit more, the scale of our data set means that 5% of builds finishing under 12 seconds is approximately 500,000 builds that finished in under 12 seconds. That does seem fast. You should think that that seems fast because that is fast, but there is a number of uh, scenarios that are completely legitimate that are finishing in under 12 seconds. I mean, there's a couple of scenarios that I can think of that are probably not incredibly valuable signals to get back. Uh, you know, I can print a screen incredibly fast. I might be able to do that in under a second. Uh, I can push an artifact to an S3 bucket, uh, well, depending on how fast that spins up. I mean, there, there's there's a number of ways that I can like move files around, uh, you know, print things to screen. Uh, none of those things are workflows that really add any value, but that would finish incredibly fast. Uh, I mean, another example would be that, you know, a workflow with no tres tests finishes trivially fast, uh, but there's not a whole lot that you can do with a success signal from a workflow that finished with no tests. Uh, so what does 12 seconds look like that's legitimate? Uh, I mean, I think that it looks like um, I can run an enormous number of unit tests uh, in about one to two seconds in parallel. Uh, so this 12 seconds gives me enough time to spin up an image uh, as long as that image is not very large or maybe even if I'm spinning it up from cache uh, and then run these workflows uh, at a rapid, rapid clip. And so while this is an incredibly low number, 12 seconds is a pretty fast workflow. Uh, I don't think that it's unreasonable for teams to actually hit these numbers and actually be getting signals that are valuable. Um, again, a, a, a very large number of unit tests running in parallel uh, could finish in under 12 seconds, and that would be a highly valuable signal to get. 12 seconds was the fifth percentile. It's at the, at the, at the bottom. 95th percentile is at 34 minutes. It's getting pretty long there. Uh, 50th percentile is under four minutes. That's pretty fast. That's very fast. Uh, so what, what does this mean for your team? Uh, I mean, I, I told you there's a number of scenarios in which you could probably get uh, uh, this down to 12 seconds or below, depending on what your goals for that particular workflow were. Um, ideally, we would be trying to get a signal back that's as value as po valuable as possible. Uh, and when I say that, and I, I, I mean like the, you know, uh, a large number of unit tests run in under 12 seconds, you know, we're, we're basically at the unit layer. As soon as we start getting more advanced testing through integration layers and UI and UX uh, 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 tests, we start to uh, immediately uh, bog, bog our workflows down. Those tests take longer to run. Those tests often can't run in parallel. They, they, they have dependencies that have to be built before them. And so, uh, you know, as we start getting up into the order of minutes, four minutes, five minutes, six minutes, uh, 21 minutes, 35 minutes, uh, what that looks like is a lot more test coverage. Uh, and, 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 and oftentimes it could look like, uh, you know, not the most efficient uh, continuous integration um, uh, builds as well. And so all of that's here, all of that's listed here. And so what, what would be a reasonable recommendation for your team? I think it would be unreasonable to think, I mean, well, I think in large part, majority of workflows should be able to finish in under 10 minutes. I don't think that 10 minutes is uh, incredibly hot. I mean, I don't think that there's a scenario in which 
10 minutes is going to be too difficult for your team to achieve. I think if you're running workflows that run longer than 10 minutes and you're convinced that your workflows are optimal and that they're efficient, you probably have an idea of what type of signal that you need to get from that workflow and a good reason for it to run that long. And I think that there's always opportunities for us to get this back as quickly as possible. Again, if we need to mitigate bad signal, we need this to come as quickly as possible. So we want these things to run as fast as possible, but we also need to make sure that we get as much value out of them as we possibly can. Half of all builds finished in under four minutes. I just mentioned that. Uh, and so the, like I said, I think that the goal for those types that for that particular metric for, for organizations should be something on the order of 10 minutes. Um, success rate. So success rate is one I think that is 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 interesting. Uh, I think it's interesting in this through the same lens of throughput. In that you know I, I I certainly want to know the number of increments of work that are being pushed through my system as an engineering manager, as an engineering lead in engineering leadership. Uh, this type of information is highly valuable to me. Um, it's far more valuable than number of lines, right? Like I, the, I, I'm, I'm thinking of actual work moving through my system uh, and success rate is the number of times actual work moves through my, success, my system successfully, right? So this is also something that's gonna be highly valuable for me to, to understand, to track, to make sure that uh, you know, I understand where the rest of the industry is or for things like this. And, and I can you know, adequately motivate my team to, to, to meet standards and, and, and ideas for, for these types of metrics. And so, uh, you know, success rate, like I, I, I just said, this is how often your pipeline completes with the green status. Completing with the green status, I mean, the, the other side of this is completing with the red status, clearly. Uh, and like, you know, it's going to be test failure, it's going to be build failure, it's gonna be pipeline failure. You're gonna need some type of thing that is, is, is the signal that you're looking for so that when the end of your automation scripts do run that you do know whether or not you have production ready code that's ultimately our goal with continuous integration tools right is to always leave our applications in a uh, position where they're always ready to be deployed and we can deploy based on business interests we can deploy based on the release cycles that our organizations create and our code is always ready uh, Here's what that looks like through the data. I mean, this is this is uh, uh, I, I I find this pretty interesting because I do stare at this and look at this type of thing an awful lot. Uh, but this might not be such a great surprise, and it doesn't look like there's a whole lot of action here. But you know, I I, I do get to look at the the data through a little bit more of a fine fine lens. And so through that lens, what I do see here is some things that are interesting, right? There's, you know, there's probably going to be uh, different behavior. I mean, different Git flow models for application development uh, uh, are going to be, you know, uh, utilized at different organizations. And so there's going to, you know, I mean, like, you know, super common Git flows are short-lived branch development, uh, you know, emerging to main lines um, once uh, tests are passing. Uh, and so, you know, feature development probably means I run workflow, 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 workflow on a feature branch. And then once I pass tests and I'm fine with that, then I merge one time to master, right? Or to the main line. And so once I start seeing that, uh, you know, those types of signals, like it's a, it, it's a, the, the, the majority of workflows that are gonna be run on Circle CI are going to be merges to the main uh, branch. And so the main branch is one that you certainly is the one that you know has your application ready to go. And so that's the one that's probably going to be the most important branch for you to keep uh, green. And so that's the one that we see here uh, is most of the time green. I mean, 61%. I don't think is is too bad uh, because, I, like I said, I think that there's a lot of application development that's done on feature branches, and so you're going to see a lot of lower success rate on those branches, and then you're going to have a large number of workflows that are only run on merged to, to the main branch, and in those scenarios, you're going to have a very high percentage, uh, and so the combination of those two looks like about 61%, and I want to uh, uh, the 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 real value of using continuous integration tools is that bad signal or failed signal. I won't call it bad signal, but a, a failing signal isn't necessarily uh, uh, a bad thing. Now, if it takes an incredibly long time to mitigate a failed signal, I would say that that is a bad thing. But when I see 61%, what that says is uh, is innovation, right? Uh, a continuous integration tool gives you the opportunity to push increments of code through your system, uh, see how that would behave, and then decide whether or not that uh, uh, packet of information gets added to your, ultimately added to your code base. And so um, knowing that there is protection 
from you introducing bad code into the code base through your in continuous integration tooling uh, does give you the confidence to be able to push commits and not worry about bringing down your production server uh, through that process if you didn't have perfect code in that. And so testing uh, and, and, and understanding your signal are, the two, are, are two of the really big value as the continuous integration tooling will get you. And so, uh, you know, the, that dichotomy that we see there, five, five percent or five, fifth percentile is at zero. It jumps to 61 percent at 50th percentile, and then it's at 100 percent above 90th percentile. Uh, you know, what that says is that, you know, there's a good deal of folks that are in our group that are only dabbling with CircleCI or not with CircleCI, but with continuous integration. Uh, but they don't always get a working build. There's a number like zero percent means that there's a number of workflows in there that in the 30 days in which we measured uh, our, our data set, um, there is a number of, of workflows in there that never passed. Uh, so that, that's where we get zeros from. Uh, and then some of them saw no work, no, no failures within a month. So you get a, you, the, the 100%, uh, that's, that's where those two signals come from. But I think that, the, that, that looking at that through a, a little bit more of a fine grained lens uh, and starting to understand what, what happens on branches and not just uh, uh, on all branches in, in total, I think it gives a little bit more interesting picture. Recovery time, mean time to recovery. These are this again. I think is the absolute most valuable uh, uh, metric of the four that we're going to discuss today. Um, recovery time is the time that that uh, your pipeline sits in a failure state. So no one wants this. Everyone wants their pipelines to be sitting in a green state. You know, the ultimate goal of continuous integration, continuous delivery, is to leave our applications in a state where they're always ready to be deployed. Uh, we want to deploy based on our business interests. We want to deploy based on the release cycle that is set by our industry and our uh, organization's uh, understanding of its place inside it. We do not want to deploy our applications because of when our engineering teams have the bandwidth or when their tooling allows so. And so mean time to recovery is going to be a major, major aspect of how we are able to keep our code base into in that state. What does it look like? What are the folks doing on Circle CI? Uh, fifth percentile can do it, the, can do it pretty quickly. Uh, two minutes is incredibly fast. Um, there's a not large number of workflows that run very quickly on Circle CI, and so uh, two minutes doesn't seem like that's a very unreasonable. Um, there's also scenarios in which you can imagine uh, you knowingly uh, commit bad code uh, and then immediately follow up with a, a fix that then builds right behind the. The, the workflow that you just pushed. And so that could look like uh, uh, um, a, a branch or a workflow going from uh, green to red to back to green uh, in, a, in a short period of time, even though that wouldn't necessarily uh, be a symbolic of, 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 of finding error or of, of discovering error or discovering a, a failed build, a red build, and then being able to mitigate that uh, signal through the developer tools that, that, that you usually use to um, debug. We have 50 percentile here at 55 minutes, 11 seconds. That's pretty fast, I would say. Uh, one hour for mitigation of issues, I think is what we should all strive for as, uh, or, as organizations. Ideally, uh, we would want to drive this number to zero. Uh, I don't think that it's possible to get it to zero, but there's no reason why 10 minutes is good enough uh, or even three minutes is good enough. This is always something that you want to be able to remedy as absolutely fast as possible. If there's a way to get more seconds uh, or you know, get it to, to, to decrease seconds to get closer and closer to uh, eliminating this time. I mean, within reason, all workflows take at least a certain period of time. So you would only be able to recover in the length of time that it takes for another workflow to run. Uh, and so, uh, but like ideally getting this number as low as possible is going to be what is uh, desired by most teams. Um, 3.4 days is incredibly long. That's probably much, much longer than most of us would want any of our applications to sit into a failed state. Um, but the, 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 the real value of being able to um, use you know, continuous integration tools is, is, is also collaboration. One of the real value propositions for continuous integration tools is collaboration. So there's lots of different ways that we can get uh, uh, 
codes to you know uh, our, our our workflows to switch from red to green um bigger teams are going to be able to do that much more efficiently than teams that are a little bit smaller uh and then the, another interesting thing that we we saw is the, the gap between the 50th and 70th percentiles is incredibly large it kind of grows reasonably uh, not quite linearly but it grows reasonably up until the 50th percentile and then there's kind of a step to uh, a larger 75th percentile and so what that looks like is it represents uh, a, a, we think that it, it represents um, getting a, a, a failed build towards the end of the day and then not being able to mitigate that signal uh, until the following day because the time gap there is of about nine and a half hours looks like uh, coming in the next day and then having a few minutes before you're able to resolve that bug.